Who might have got an email? Email? <laughs> but if you have an equation, I'm going to teach you how you can get rid of fractions in just one step right away so you never have to deal with them and turn this into a pretty basic problem. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. What you're going to look for is, do you remember this term called an LCD? What's an LCD mean? Yeah. If we can find an LCD, we can eliminate fractions in an equation. So our goal here is when we have an equation that has fractions, We have an equation, remember this is an equation, has fractions. What we're going to do is we're going to find the LCD. And we're going to multiply both sides of members of the equation. You've got to do what, for one side, the other side as well. We're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. By the way, I'm going to leave a little blank spot here, and I'm going to fill it in in just a minute. We'll find both sides by the LCD. Let's work on the LCD. What are our denominators here? How many denominators do we have in our equation? Two. How many total do we have? Three. three total. You've got to look at all of them. So one, two, three. Now, two of them are the same, so that's the same number. How do you find the LCD? Let's review that for a second. Do you just multiply the numbers together? No. That's one way to find a common denominator, but it definitely might not be the smallest common denominator, the least common denominator. So one good way to find the LCD, take the biggest denominator that you have, in our case, 8. Start finding multiples of that thing. So the first multiple is 8. Does 6 go into 8? So go bigger. What's the next multiple of 8? Does 6 go into 16? No. What's the next one? Does 6 go into 24? Yes. That's how you find your least common denominator. That's a real quick way to do it. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to write LCD is 24. And what I said is we're going to multiply both sides by the LCD. Let's try that. Do I mean LCD over LCD or just LCD? LCD, just LCD. Just LCD, yeah, watch what happens. If we multiply the right-hand side by our LCD, so times 24, and I multiply the left-hand side by 24, first of all, can somebody tell me what's not quite right about this the way it is right now? It's happening on the left-hand side, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Good, so if I'm talking about the left, like both sides here, I don't just mean this one, do I? No. I mean, well, what's that process that I'm showing you right here? Distribution. We're going to have to distribute. Okay. Let's see what happens when we distribute. If we take this to, does it go to the first one, the second one, or both of them again? What, how does distribution work? So this goes to both of our inside terms. We'll have 24 times x over 6 minus 24 times x over 8 equals 1 8 times 24. Okay, take a moment to take that in because this is a little bit more advanced than the thing we just did. Firstly, are you okay with finding your LCD? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with multiplying both sides of an equation and then distributing? So how many people are all right with this so far? Raise your hand if you are. Good, okay. By the way, this is what I'm going to fill in over here. When you multiply both sides of an equation by something, what it comes down to is just multiplying by every term. That's really what we're talking about. When you distribute this, notice how the 24 get multiplied by this term, and this term, and this term. That's all we mean. In fact, I don't really even care about this particular step, as long as you know that the LCD is going to be multiplied by every single term. You'll be all right in this. Not too good if you're okay with that. Okay, so do you have to show me this step? Only if you want to, you can. I need you to understand that we're multiplying every term by the LCD. So this means every term. This means every term. Now, 
what happens when you multiply by the LCD? Let's take a look at it. You might remember how to change a whole number into a fraction. How do you change a whole number into a fraction? Let's do that. If we really do that, we do 24 over 1, 24 over 1, and 24 over 1. Can you tell me what's going to happen? 24x over 6. Well, we have 24x over 6. We do have that. We could multiply straight across, right? We get 24x over 6. Goes into 24 times. Oh, it's right, because we know how to simplify fractions as we go, right? Don't, remember do, don't you remember doing that? Don't know. That was the fun part of fractions. You get to cross stuff out. I love that. So we get to cross this stuff out. We look at these and we see if there's factors on the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, they're the same. If there are, we can simplify them because we really are making fancy ones out of it. Make fancy ones, multiply by ones, doesn't mean anything. You learned all the basics back in Math 80 to do this. So we say, okay, is there any number that goes into both 24 and 6? 6. You know what? Six has to go into that number. That's why we chose 24, because LCD takes those numbers as factors, right? Mm -hmm. So this number is going to have to go into that, which means that it's going to simplify out. Six goes into six how many times? How many times does it go into 24? Can you tell me what's left over out of this whole term? Perfect. Minus, does the same thing happen here? Yes. Eight goes into eight, well, one time, 24. We have the minus sign that, that carries down. We have 3x. And then on the right-hand side, same thing happens. 8 goes into 8 once, into 24 three times. What do we get on the right-hand side of our equation? Cool. Does this look easier than that? Yeah. Now, it took us quite a long time to actually do this because I was talking through it, but that's pretty quick. I mean, you just find your LCD, you multiply every term. It does cancel out because it has to. And then we have a very basic equation with absolutely no fractions whatsoever. So let's go back to our previous steps that I, I showed you. The first step was simplify both sides. Are my sides simplified? Do I have any dis distribution to do? That's no parentheses. But do I have any like terms? Yes. Notice the difference between the first equations and, the, and this next one. These are on the same side. They are like terms. So what's our 4x minus 3x? Do we have to put the 1 in front of it? No. Hey, we're done. This will still check, even though it'll give you some nasty fractions up there, like, well, 3 over 6 is 1 half minus 3 eighths equals 1 eighth. It will still check out for you. How many people understood how to do, do this problem? Feel okay about it? Good deal. I am going to give you one to try on your own. Let's try that out. Just to make sure you can handle this. So let's do y over 2 minus y over 5 equals 1 fourth. So give that a try. Remember, anytime you have an equation, you can eliminate those fractions. That's a great thing. That's a great thing about equations. Give that a try. I'll be walking around if you need help. First thing you need to do is find your LCD, okay? That's, that's step number one. Most of the time when you're dealing with fractions, at least when you're dealing with equations. Take that LCD, multiply it by every single term. That should eliminate your fractions for you, and then we solve it like one. Hey, shout out your LCD to me. What'd you find? 20. Is it 10 or is it 20? Let's 20. talk about that. 10 or 20? 20. Why is it not just 10? Yeah. You know what? We've got to consider all three of these fractions. If you found the 10, guess what would happen? You'd get all the way down to this step, and you would still have fractions. 
that should be an indicator that you picked the wrong LCD. If you still have fractions, you've done something wrong, go back and fix it. So here we go, okay, we have our LCD of not 10, but 20. We're going to take and we're going to multiply both sides. That means every single term by 20. So I, I really, I don't need to see this step if you don't want to. I'm going to put it right here, times 20, times 20, sorry, it's a little cramped, times 20. And really what we mean is 20 over 1. See what that lets us do, since we use all three of our denominators, it means all three of these denominators are going to be factors of our LCD. It has to. It's the way LCD works. So we're going to simplify now. What do we get when we simplify our 2 with our 20? Perfect. So right down here, we're going to have our 10y. And our 5 over 20, what's that give us? So we'll still have our minus 4y. And lastly, on the right-hand side, again, 4 with 20 gives us? So 1 times 5 over 1, we're going to get our 5. We done yet? No. Next step, what are we going to do? <coughs> Great, you can use the appropriate terminology. I love it. So combine like terms, same side, we're going to get 6y equals 5. And our last step, folks, when we're dealing with equations is usually to? Okay. By what? Six. Wait a second, 6 isn't going to go into 5. So we're going to get y equals real nasty 5 sixths. Would you show me if you got this right? Perfect. All right. Good deal. So we kind of conquered the basic idea of equations. We know how to change fraction equations into basic equations and then solve them. That's kind of great because we never have to deal with fractions and equations. And so let's move on a little bit. So we're moving along. We got all this down. And then we get to this problem. Okay. Here we go, all right. Is it still an equation? Yes. What do you do? Can we solve it like we solved the previous problems? For instance, the previous problems would have been something like subtract 6, combine your, wait a minute. Do we have any like terms up here? So what you're saying is we, even though we have two x's, we don't have any like terms. That's something we haven't dealt with yet in this class. Uh, you probably dealt with it in your math A class. But there was something kind of unique that you did here. You can't solve this directly. You can't just hammer at it and subtract and add and divide and get the right answer. There was another thing that we had to do to solve this problem. Do you remember what you had to do to solve this problem? Change the form? Change the, what do you mean change the form? If we try that, if we do, form, that's right? a great idea. That is a great idea. It's already in standard form here. If we subtract the six like you would on the other problems, what's still going to happen though is we'd have you like that, right? We have a couple x's that we can't do anything about. Even if we subtracted the five x. I'm not showing you all the steps, but that's what you get, right? Mm -hmm. How much is x? Mm -hmm. I don't know. How do we get rid of that? I don't know. There's an x on both sides. That's never a good thing. Our whole goal was try to get x's on one side before and then combine them. But that's this. And if they're not combinable, there's something else that you need to do. Do, something do you before. factor it out? You factor it out. So what, right now, what we're going to do, in order to solve this equation, we have to factor it. We're going to learn how to factor it. So we're going to take a